Hey, welcome back to FTL Easy Mode. Uh, I'm starting a second playthrough here. Uh, I figured I would try out a different ship and show it off a little bit. Um, <clears throat> in this case, we'll be using the Angie ship, the Taurus. This is its default configuration. Uh, I don't really use this ship that often. Uh, it's not one of my favorites but it's usually the first one that you'll unlock as you play through the game, so I figured I would show it off. Uh, you can see you start off with two Engi crew members and one human. Instead of uh, weapons that do actual damage, you start off with the Ion Blast 2, and you start off with an anti-ship drone as well, and uh, powered drones and drone control. This ship uh, plays quite a bit differently, at least early on, than the standard Kestrel, but... As usual, depending on what you come across in the game, you can kind of sculpt it to uh, suit your playstyle. One other notable difference is that it only has three slots for weapons, unlike the Kestrel, which starts with four. First thing we'll do is rename it, because the Taurus is boring, so we're going to rename it the Square Donut. Because it looks like a Square Donut. And with that all set, we are ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to turn on our weapons. The Ion Blast 2 is great because it does one ion damage, but it fires extremely quickly. It fires once every four seconds, and that's just its base firing rate. If you get uh, the automatic reloader upgrade and uh, your crew member gains some skill in gunnery, it can start firing just ridiculously quickly. It's like a machine gun that takes out shields and things like that. Uh, until we find some other weapons, though, our only offensive capability is going to be coming from this anti-ship drone. So either we're going to have to get lucky, or we're going to have to rely on drones to do all of our fighting for us, at least for the first while. Uh, I'm going to send my human crew member up to man the gunnery room, and I'm going to send my other Engi over to man the engine room, as I typically do. I'm going to power down my med bay and power up my engines, and we are all set to make our first jump. I'm going to go over here. And the first thing we come across is an offer to take up some mercenary work. Let's see what it, what it, they have to say. Uh, oh, this one's easy. They want us to severely damage an enemy ship without destroying it. Uh, we are very good at severely damaging enemy ships, even with our rather limited loadout at the moment. So we're going to agree, and that just takes us straight into a fight with this. In this case, it's a Manus ship. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on our anti-ship drone. You'll see that turning on the drone consumes one drone part, so it is a consumable resource. The second thing we're going to do is select our ion blast and target their shields. I'm going to make sure to turn on auto-fire so it just keeps firing as long as I have it targeted, and away we go. Uh, they send boarders onto our ship but we have a human crew member to deal with that, so I'm not too worried about it. In the meantime, you'll see that the Ion Blast is taking down their shields and keeping them down because it fires so quickly, while the anti-ship drone is floating around, kind of shooting randomly at their ship. We've now done enough damage that they are asking us to let them live. Since that was part of the agreement, we will agree to do so. And as a reward, we get a bunch of scrap, and more importantly, a hull smasher laser, which is good because now we have some offensive firepower. We don't have enough power to run both of our weapons yet, so at least for the next little while I'll still be relying on the anti-ship drone, but I'm going to make upgrading our weapons a, a pretty high priority. Uh, there are two stores within range, so what I'm going to do is jump to the upper left here and then kind of loop around to that upper store. That way we should have some extra scrap by the time we get there. Here we have an empty sector. And here we come across an asteroid field. Let's explore it. Uh, we find 25 scrap, which is good, and we find a drone part, which is also good, because we will be consuming those at a fair rate. Now let's check out the store. <clears throat> oh, wow, we are getting really good luck with the weapon drops here. We can see we already have a burst laser 2 available, and that is much better than the stock hull laser we have here. So I'm going to sell that hull laser and buy the burst laser. And while I'm at it, I'm going to spend the remainder of my cash on fuel, because, like I said in my previous videos, I like to have pretty much as much fuel as I can get my hands on. 
So with that all set, we are going to make another jump. And here we end up in combat again. This time it's against a forward scout. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on my anti-ship drone again. And at the start, I'm going to have the ion blast targeting their shields just to take them down. And then once those are pretty much down, I'm going to switch that over to targeting their engines so they won't be able to jump away on me. And you see here that depending on the timing of the ion blasts and your attack drone, uh, sometimes the attack drone will get through the shields and sometimes it won't, just depending on what you're targeting and where it's shooting. Since keeping this ship from getting away is a higher priority than destroying it quickly, I'm focusing on its engines rather than its shields, which means that it's only taking down the shield about half the time. And we're taking a bit of a pounding from its missile launcher, but we've taken it down, so I think we're pretty much okay. we got some fuel, some scrap, and some drone parts. Uh, we've got a breach in our med bay, so I'm going to send my full health Engi in there to heal that up. When you have a breach in a room with a system in it, your, your uh, crew members will automatically try to fix the breach before they fix the systems in that room. So it's important to keep that in mind because they will be taking damage from the vacuum until you get that breach cleared out. With that done, I'm going to turn on our med bay to get my Engi healed up again. You can see that my human crew member is also being healed as well. That's because the Engi ship starts with an augmentation called Engi Medbot Dispersal. What this does is that as long as you have the med bay powered up, it will slowly heal everybody who's friendly on your ship. Uh, it does about, like, one health every half second or so. So it's not nearly as fast as a med bay, but it, uh, it's still better than nothing. And with that all said and done, I am going to make another jump. Here we're given the offer to repair some of our damage, but right now I really need the scrap more than I need that, like, extra five points of health or whatever, so I'm going to skip that for now. And here we have another empty sector, and there's a distress signal over by the exit point, so let's check that out. Uh, these guys need some fuel. We've got plenty of fuel, so let's give that to them. And they update our map. Uh, this would have done us a lot more good had we come across it early on in the sector, but this late, it's not super useful. Uh, at least we know where there are some enemy ships we can fight to get some more scrap. And here is one of those ships now. Uh, same deal with this guy. I'm going to use the ion blast to take down their shields and the anti-ship drone to destroy them. And that started a fire on our ship, so I'm going to have to open some doors and hopefully try to get that snuffed out before it can spread to one of our more important rooms. The trouble with using anti-ship drones for combat is that they target essentially at random, so you can't really control what's getting hit like you can with a normal weapon. So we got him taken out, um, took a few hits... But thankfully we got some fuel and some scrap. Um, I would say that at least the default configuration of the Engi ship is definitely harder to use than the default uh, Kestrel, the starting ship. But, you know, uh, every layout has its advantages and disadvantages. And one of the things I think this game does really well is the balance. I think uh, everything is exquisitely fine-tuned to uh, be fair. Everything has an advantage and a drawback. So I'm going to start investing in powering up our weapons because we really need to get a little bit more firepower here before we move too far through the game. Here we are at the end point. We're given an offer to sell missiles for scrap, but we don't have any missiles, so we're going to ignore that. I'm not sure that I can visit this lower 
uh, jump point before the fleet gets to the exit, so I'm just going to go to the next sector. I would have liked to get one more node in, but since I have so little as far as resources and upgrades go, it's better to play it safe. Here we have another distress beacon, so let's go check that out. And it's the giant alien spiders one, which I spoke about in the previous videos. We're going to ignore that and jump back here instead. <clears throat> and here we have an enemy ship. And at this point, I'm almost... I almost think that turning off the Iron Blast and switching to the Burst Laser is a better move, because as nice as it is to be able to take down their ship, their shields quickly, I think it's more important to be able to do damage, at least in this early stage of the game. The Iron Blast 2 is one of the best weapons in the game, um, when used in, con in conjunction with other weaponry. But on its own, since it can't do actual damage, uh, it's relatively limited until you get some more firepower. So with their shields taken down, we can switch over to the weapons. And now they are a sitting duck. The other benefit of switching to the burst laser is that we're not using valuable drone parts, uh, which we will probably need later on for things like uh, defense drones and things like that. Uh, I don't generally use anti-ship drones very often. Um, I find that defense drones are more useful overall. Um, anti-ship stuff definitely has its situational uses, but overall I find drones are best used for defense rather than offense. And here we have a pretty well-armed Zoltan ship, so this is probably going to do a fair bit of damage to us before we can get through all of its shielding and get its weapons taken down. And maybe it's just my playstyle. I'm certain part of it is my playstyle, but I think some of it is just the, the setup of the ship. But I do find myself taking a lot more damage early on with this ship than I do with the Kestrel. Thankfully, we have two Engi on board to start out with, so making quick repairs is really easy. And there we go. They are taken care of. And it turns out that the ship we saved was a black market arms dealer. Now, uh, this is a bit of a tough call, because I really want to spend that scrap on upgrading my weapons again, but they've, he's also got a lot of stuff that I'd like to have, like the scrap recovery arm, or the automated reloader, or fixing up my ship. Um, let's see. I can get... I can fix my ship and buy the reloader, and I think that will have to do. Uh, what the automated reloader does is it lowers the cooldown time on all of your weapons by 15%, uh, which is super handy, uh, even more so with a super fast-firing weapon like the Ion Blast. Uh, there we got a free anti-ship drone and a little bit of scrap, which is always welcome. And here we have another Rebel Fighter. This one has an attack drone of its own. I was hoping it was a beam drone, because then it wouldn't be able to cut through my shield on its own, but it's not, so I'm just going to have to hope that I do better than that. I'm actually going to turn on my anti-ship drone here, just because I could use a little bit of extra firepower. Yeah, that worked out good, because it happened to hit their weapons bay. So we got some fuel, a missile, and some scrap. And here we are given the option of giving the Engi vessel that we saved some scrap, 
The grayed out option is to give them 40 scrap, 2 missiles, and 2 fuel, which, if you don't already have the upgrade, will give you the Engi Medbay upgrade. Uh, since we already have it, we can't take that option, and you don't get anything if you give them scrap except maybe a, I don't know, a clear conscience, but honestly I need that scrap, so they are going to have to suck it up. And the flavor text for that is pretty funny, so if you play through the game you should take the time to read it. Here we have... Oh wow, we're getting pretty lucky with the random events. Here we get some loot and a free drone recovery arm. The drone recovery arm is great for the Engi ship because it means that we will recover any drones left kind of floating around after a fight. That includes enemy drones as well as our own, so we will basically never lose drone parts, and it will be much, much easier to get more for free, which is great. Let's go check out that store. I don't plan on buying anything, but you never know. Uh, I could buy that defense drone, but I don't need it yet, and I would rather just buy a little bit more fuel and upgrade my weapons system one more time. Because now, if I power down my med bay, I can use the Ion Blast 2 and the Burst Laser 2, so I just became much more dangerous in fight. My next upgrade is almost certainly going to be my shields, because I feel very vulnerable with just one level of shield. <clears throat> Here we come across an Engi ship that thinks we are bad guys because we've got weapons, and they try to surrender to us. Uh, we could either be honest and say that we're friendly, or we could kind of keep our mouths shut and take whatever they're offering us. I feel like since we're Engi, we're probably going to be honest to them. So let's say that we're friendly. And in this case, it worked out in our favor. Uh, they were happy that we were honest, and so they gave us some scrap, some fuel, and a missile. So that's good. Sometimes if you take that option, they'll just be thankful that you didn't blow them up, and they'll jump away without giving you anything. <clears throat> and here we come across an automated scout ship guarding a storage cache. Of course we're going to attack it, because we want whatever's in that cache, hopefully something good. And you'll see this is really where the Ion Blast 2 comes into its own. It takes down those shields so quickly, and of course I immediately get hit with a missile. But that's okay. He'll have uh, he'll have my weapons bay up and running again pretty quickly. And then I will be able to hit his weapons with my burst laser. I could retarget my Iron Blast to jam up his weapons, but I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, and there was a fire in my sensor room. It's good that I sent Nangi over there. So yeah, you can see the Ion Blast 2 is just so good for chewing up enemy shields. I mean, it, it literally, as long as it keeps hitting with at least every other shot, it the, the Rebel ship can't recharge its shields fast enough to get them back up. So it's super handy. Got some scrap, and oh my goodness. Oh wow, we just got a second Ion Blast Mark 2. That, I don't think that's ever happened to me before. I don't think I've ever actually had two of these on one ship. Uh, this could be really fun. Basically, now we're going to have a non-stop machine gun of ion blasts if I can get my weapon systems upgraded all the way. Which would be really funny, so I think I'm going to try and do that. First, I'm going to heal up my dudes, because they've taken a little bit of damage. Not enough that I'm worried about it, but enough that I care. And once he's healed up... Turn that back off. Really tempted to keep upgrading my weapons, but I desperately, desperately need more shields right now, so I think that's more important. I can't power them yet, but I can at least spend the money on the upgrades. And here we come across another Zoltan ship. The other thing to keep in mind is that ion weapons do a lot more damage to the Zoltan shields than regular weapons do. You see, it takes out like a third of it with every hit. Uh, so they are very, very good for getting through that shield. And then after that, we can just focus on taking out his weapons. Um, getting Ion Blast 2 at the start of the game like this uh, is really easy and probably the main selling point of the Engi ship, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> we got very lucky with our weapon drops this playthrough in getting that Burst Laser 2 so early on. So we are able to put out a respectable amount of damage while still uh, keeping their shields down as much as possible. Heal him up again. 
And with that scrap, I have enough to power a second layer of shields, which is very good news. And we will jump out of here. Uh, but first, there is a Rebel Scout guarding some data. We are going to attempt to download it. We're successful, which means the ship doesn't activate and go hostile, so we get some free fuel, our map gets updated, we get some scrap and a drone part. Uh, the updated map doesn't really do us any good, but the free stuff is always appreciated. I'm going to head through the Engie controlled sector, because that sounds nice and friendly. And there's a distress call up there, so let's go check that out. Uh, there's a ship trapped in an asteroid belt. Let's see if we can get them through there. Uh, we took a little bit of damage, but in return we got a lot of fuel and a lot of scrap, so that was a good trade. And there's a store right there, so I'm going to jump and visit one or maybe two more beacons before I check out that store. Uh, here we've been offered some more mercenary work. This time there's a space dock that's being assaulted by the rebels, um, and they are paying us to rescue that, that uh, space dock. So that's added a quest marker down here south of the exit, so it'll take us a while to get down there, but it's worth checking out. I'm going to check out the store now. Uh, let's see, nothing I really want or can afford right now, but I'll fix up my ship. I'm good on fuel. I'm going to sell that beam drone because I don't need it. And, you know what, I'm going to sell the anti-ship drone either. It kind of defeats the purpose of picking the Engie ship, I know, but they're just not that useful. And now I can afford one more level of weaponry and one more level of power. Uh, that's good because now my med bay is permanently powered on, which means that the Engie healing nanobots will always be on, so I'll always be getting at least a little bit of the health at a time, even for people who aren't in the mid bay. And with two... Oh, one thing, if you looked closely there, you could see that one of my laser blasts actually collided with one of his, and they cancelled each other out. Uh, weapons do interact like that, which uh, can sometimes work out in your favor, which is neat. Um, weaponry can also take out enemy drones if it happens to hit the drone uh, directly, but the chances of that are fairly low. It doesn't happen too often, so it's not something you want to rely on, or particularly worry about. Get some scrap, we'll jump down here. And we got some Mantis who are talking about doing horrible things to their prisoners, and we won't stand for that, so we're going to attack them. And you can see here, I'm not even really waiting to, you know, time out my shots, because I just know that the Ion Blast will have taken down their shields by the time the Burst Laser has charged. I mean, if, if one Ion Blast 2 can do this, I can only imagine what having two is going to be like. I'm not going to be doing a ton of damage at any given time, but, oh man. And here we could trade some fuel for some missiles, but we're not using missiles, so there's no point. So let's check out that quest. Engage the Rebel and rescue the space dock. Yes, let's do that. Alright, they've got a defense drone, but it's only a Mark I, so it won't actually be able to shoot down any of our lasers. The ship is having lousy luck with dodging missiles and stuff, but that's okay. There we go. We get some scrap for destroying them, and that opens up another store. <laughs> you can see there, there's a weapon pre-igniter for sale. Um, if I sold a few things, I could probably afford that, but I showed that off last game, so I'm not going to do that. 
I'm really tempted to buy the crew teleporter now and hope I come across some more crew members that I can hire, but since I don't have enough crew to really use it yet, I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm just going to buy some more fuel and uh, see if I can afford another weapon upgrade. Now I'm four scraps short. That's okay. Looks like we'll have at least enough time to check out this distress signal before we have to get out of this sector, so let's do that. Alright, here we have a space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defense system has gone haywire, and their repair crew can't approach it without being fired on. Uh, normally, if we didn't have an ion weapon or an Angie crew member, we would have the option of either blowing it up from a distance, which they wouldn't be thrilled about, and we'd only get a little bit of scrap, or leaving them alone, which would obviously be pretty heartless. But because we have an ion weapon, we could either disable it with that, or we could just use our Engi crew to remotely repair its targeting system. They're both blue options, they're both good, I don't think there's really any difference between them, uh, so let's just use the ion weapon. And because of that, we get quite a bit of scrap, some fuel, and a drone part. Excellent. Because now, I can do some upgrading. And we are almost to the point where we can use all three of our weapons, which is very exciting. Alright, I think I can make one more jump before the Rebel fleet gets to the exit beacon, so let's check out this distress beacon as well. Oh, giant alien spiders. Oh, that was a complete waste of time. At least I was right about the Rebels. And another asteroid field... And while exploring it, we come across a hostile ship. There are a number of random events that can happen when you're given the chance to explore an asteroid field. Uh, this is one of them. As you can see with his shields down, the asteroids are as much of a threat as our lasers are at this point. Uh, oh my goodness, they're offering me a whole bunch of scrap, some fuel, and a free weapon. I will absolutely accept surrender. Uh, we probably won't end up using that weapon, since we have three perfectly good ones already, but it'll be good to sell later on. And with that, we will jump out of this sector, and I will see you next time.